What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode. This is episode number 104 and today's episode is the Champions League final with Torino here against Barcelona. As you can see, we got to the final by beating Barcelona's rivals Real Madrid by three goals to nil. Barca beat Sevilla by a goal to nil in an all-Spanish affair to set up this Barcelona versus Torino tie. Should be a really exciting final, uh, of course, for uh, for one reason, if nothing else. We've got Neymar taking on his former club and Dybala taking on his former club, so that should be really really exciting and uh, also as well is the final episode of the series as well we've reached the final episode and really really hopeful of winning this Champions League final on the final episode of the series because of course we are currently as things stand on course for back-to-back -back sweeps last season we won every single trophy available this season we've won every single trophy available and of course the Champions League final is that last trophy to win so if we do it we'll complete back-to-back -back sweeps for the first ever time and I'm really really desperate to do that but uh, still is the final episode of the series and I do want to say a massive massive thank you for the support on it it's been really really well received and I'm so glad should I put both teams in the classic kits is that going to be enough distinction there in the in the kit coloring I don't think it will be to be honest let's put them in yellow I'll put Torino in a classic kit but uh Barcelona have to wear their uh their regular one and um and there you go but yeah the, uh, the support in the series has been incredible guys I really do appreciate it obviously every single year I do career mode and um there's always sort of one main one and uh, one which doesn't actually, you know, have as many episodes. It's, it's like a half career mode, really. And, uh, you know, last season I did that with my uh, my Millwall career mode. That was the main one. And then the uh, sort of the half one was the Herder Berlin career mode. And this is the same one here with Torino. We had our sort of main one starting with West Bromwich Albion and then going to PSG and then obviously Arsenal. And with, uh, with this year, it's been... Um, with uh, the, the half career mode, it's been uh, it's been with Torino, and it's it's been really fun for me to make this series for you guys. Obviously, staying with the same team for the duration of the series is something which some people like and some people don't. But for me, I think it's really really fun to do because it means that you feel more attached to the team, if you know what I mean. You you feel like it's it's your side as opposed to going into a new side and making it your own. This one sort of is your own right from the beginning. So it's been really fun for me to make this series. Uh, you guys have given some fantastic support. I want to say so so much thank you. Uh, so much thank you. So much appreciation for that. I'm really am uh, really am thankful for it. It's it's been really well received. I'm very grateful, and um, it's it's been a lot of fun for me to make these videos. And hopefully, you guys have been enjoying them as well. But uh, yeah, today's episode is the Champions League final here against Barcelona. Really, really hopeful of winning it and getting ourselves our back-to-back -back sweeps. And um, and yeah, hopefully, we'll be able to do so. Now, before I go on, I will say that my new series has started. Uh, that's called One Season Challenge. If you haven't been watching that, I do recommend you guys go and check it out. It's a, it's a one season career mode as the title would suggest and it's between two teams QPR and Hull so it's a different type of career mode I'm managing two teams in two different saves but we're tracking the progress of both teams every single episode um, do recommend you guys go check that out of course and don't forget that uh, if you have uh, seen the first episode you'll know that at the end of the series you guys will be voting to tell me which side you think I managed better and that team will then go into a straw poll for a list of teams which you guys will be voting for again for me to start my FIFA 16 career mode with so for those of you out there that have been asking me what team I'll be managing if you were 16 career mode what team I'll be starting off with it's going to be your choice and I recommend watching that series just because you can get the choice between two of those teams right there to go into the final list of teams and uh, and there you go but uh, either way I will be uploading a video in the next couple of weeks or so basically with a, a one-off video showing you the teams I'll have in a straw poll for you guys to vote for for what team I'll be managing if you were 16 career mode so in a couple of weeks time two or three weeks time you'll see a video on your side box it will say something like you know choose my team for FIFA 16 career mode and you guys will get to choose between a list of like five or six teams I've already told you one that's Derby County and uh, obviously uh, QPR or Hull will be into that poll as well and uh, do you know what in this episode I'll treat you guys I'll tell you another team I'm going to think about putting in the poll as well that's going to be Watford a newly promoted side to the Premier League and, uh, and they'll also go in the poll as well and, uh, and there'll be a few others too and you guys will get to make the final choice and there you go so anyway guys uh, today's episode the Champions League final it is the final one of the, uh, the series and as it's a, uh, a final, we are doing a live commentary. In today's episode, it'll be a live Q&A. Sometimes we do live highlights, sometimes we do live Q&As. This one is going to be a live Q&A, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Sterling almost made it 1-0 in the first minute. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, I get my, quest uh, get my questions from Twitter, as per usual. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I do recommend it. It is at Doc Landers. Uh, sometimes you guys can get involved in this series via Twitter and uh, make some signings in my career mode. Recommend following me on Twitter regardless. Best place to keep up to date with me. And, uh, and also, you guys will never miss a video if you follow me on Twitter, as a link gets posted to, the, uh, to my Twitter page. 
page every single time I upload. And, uh, and there you go. So let's get down to the questions. Got quite a few today. I favorite quite a few. If I don't get around to your question, um, please don't take it to heart. I just get so many, so I just favorite a bunch and usually don't even get time to answer all of those. And I don't take it to heart. It's nothing personal. It's uh, it's just a case of me getting loads and uh, just trying to vary up who asked the questions and what they are. And uh, and there you go. So we'll get to the first question in just a moment's time. And, uh, and there you go. Not really sure how this final is going to go, to be honest. Obviously, with us, with Torino, we try and dominate possession as much as possible. But Barcelona, I mean, they're so good at keeping hold of the ball as well. I think whoever wins the possession battle in this game will probably go on to win the game. That's... You know, that's, that's going to be the key, in my opinion. Who keeps holding the ball better and who carves out the more chances? Because I think it could be quite a slow-paced game, this one. But uh, we'll have to wait and see, especially as the, uh, the, 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 the game has it raining here at the San Siro, which I never like to play in the rain. And, um, and hopefully we'll still be okay. And there you go. So, uh, I'll get to the questions in a moment's time. As Neymar with a nice little scoop pass there gives to Shalinoli. And a nice little scoop turn there from Shalinoli. Back to Verratti, back to Neymar. And uh, Neymar turns. Still Neymar, still Neymar, still Neymar. Tackle by Mascherano. Need the ball to go dead. <laughs> and uh, then I'll finally get to the questions. That's one of the most annoying things when I do live commentaries and live Q&As. It takes ages for the ball to go dead. So I can skip to the next question. And, uh, and start answering more as Messi pokes it through to Christian Teo. I have noticed this year as well, the ball rarely ever goes dead. Like, it really does stay in play a lot more than in previous FIFAs, at least in my opinion. The ball rarely ever goes out of play for like a throw-in or whatever and, and, and a goal kick and I should take a shot. But either way, Dani is inside here. Good chance for Barcelona to the far post, headed away by Lucas. And now to Neymar and possibly a chance on the break here as Mon uh, not Montoya. He's, he's that left back. Jordi Alba has been pushed forward. Neymar outstrength by any yesterday. And the ball still hasn't gone dead. Come on. Seriously, I want to get to the first question. This guy is going to be waiting for the rest of his life until I can actually get the ball dead here. As Iniesta gets onto the ball. Still Iniesta through towards Busquets. Now Messi on the ball. Messi to Iniesta. Turns. Plays it back towards Rakitic. Out wide towards Dani Alves. Barcelona accurate with the passing. Through towards Christian Teo. Good tackle by Arialdo. And away we go. And this is how the game is going to be for the entire duration. It's going to be slow paced. And both teams are going to be able to accurately keep hold of the ball. Here's Sterling on the ball. We're going to play it back inside towards Shalinolu. Shalinolu to Masaccio who shoots. Blocked by PK. It'll fall to Luke. Lucas. Lucas down the right hand side. He's going to try and turn play inside towards Danilo. Danilo gets himself inside. Going to shoot from a tight angle and it hits the top of the bar and goes behind for a goal kick. And finally, the ball goes dead. So the first question comes from Matthias and he says, what is your opinion on overpriced English players using sterling for £49 million as an example? Um, I think what that shows is not players that are overpriced, but a lack of quality homegrown talents in this country, hence why they are so valuable. Players like Sterling are so valuable. Now, what I mean by that is that this season we have these homegrown quotas in the Premier League where I do believe that uh, I think it's eight players need to be trained at the, uh, in the nation um, you know, in order to be eligible for a homegrown quota. And I believe that Manchester City... When the season started, because they lost, um, because they lost Michael Richards, because they lost James Milner, uh, I think Boyata was one as well, and someone else I'm forgetting, Scott Sinclair. Because they lost those players, I do believe that City started the season off with only two homegrown players. Now I might be wrong about that, willing to be wrong, but I think it was about two homegrown players, maybe three or four. But um, they had Joe Hart, obviously, and I think the other one was Richard Wright, and I can't remember anyone else who was homegrown in City's lineup. So to match this criteria, they had to start buying players that were trained in this country and Sterling fitted the bill for them you know really really well as Masaccio makes it 1-0 get in what a great start to this game Sterling fits that criteria he's homegrown in the um in the uh, in the nation and he fits that criteria which clubs need to match and City like I said didn't have enough players to fill that quota at the start of the season so of course they were going to have to start buying players that were trained in this nation and preferably English ones as well and, uh, and that's what they bought in Sterling so City for £49 million didn't just buy the player for his ability and his potential ability as well but for the fact that they needed to match that criteria. So to me, £49 million for the guy, yes, it's ridiculously overpriced. At the end of the day, you know, any one man in the world that can kick a football around is not worth £49 million, in my opinion, obviously. But, um, you know, he, 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 was, uh, he was necessary to City, really. A player that can come in, improve the first team right away, be good enough to improve in the future, and, of course, match that uh, very, very important criteria. He matches that. So Sterling, for me, going to £49 million, it is really expensive. It is what you would consider an over spend if you will that term I use so frequently in career mode but it was necessary it was necessary and again it doesn't show that we have um 
you know, it doesn't show that ne- it doesn't show that Sterling is uh, is way overpriced, and it doesn't show that City are just desperate or whatever. What it shows is that um, is that we don't have enough players in this country that are trained in this country that are worth that amount of money because you know they're just so far and few between. You know, they really are, and. I, I think that comes down to a lack of coaching, lack of good youth coaching, a lack of uh, good young players in this country. That's what it shows, in my opinion. Not that, uh, not that Sterling is overpriced and not worth the money and City have you know, overspent massively and it's a waste of money or whatever else. It doesn't show that, in my opinion. What it shows is that in this country, we don't have enough quality youngsters coming through the ranks and, uh, and, you know, and, and good youth coaching as well because they're just so far and few between. Youth talents in this country are so far and few between, in my opinion. And, uh, and there you go. It's the same with what you're seeing right now with Chelsea and John Stones, you know, bidding like £30 million pounds or whatever, it's because he fills the homegrown criteria, you know, he fills the homegrown criteria and he can get better as his uh, career goes on, as he's only uh, 21, I think, John Stones. Um, and, you know, people are saying how, you know, Chelsea could easily go across the border to uh, to Celtic, go north and uh, buy someone like Virgil van Dijk for cheaper, who some would say is just as good. Um, but he doesn't fill that criteria. The homegrown criteria is just really, really important. So, Yes, of course, £49 million pounds for Sterling, for example, is really, really expensive, but it shows that we don't have enough good young talents trained in this country and the coaching is lacking, in my opinion, at a uh, youth level. And, uh, and there you go. But that's, that's just my opinion anyway. Um, I sympathise with players like Sterling, but uh, either way, that's just how it is. And there you go. And Sterling, talk of the devil, makes it 2-0 with a fantastic finish after a nice skill move. And it's Torino 2, Barcelona 0. And what a start to this game. Two goals up, 32 minutes in. Sterling second, Masaccio first. That was a really nice goal. And we are two goals up. And, uh, and there you go. But anyway, everyone has different opinions on it. But I just I sympathise with players like Sterling. That's just me. And, uh, and there you go. So the next question comes from... Uh, I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, so I do apologise, but I think it's Bwalia, and he says, do you think that there is going to be some improvements to player career mode in FIFA 16? I would hope so. Uh, I would hope so, friend, but I'm not too sure, to be honest, because we haven't ha- haven't heard anything about it. Um, you know, you would imagine if there were going to be significant changes, EA would have announced them at this stage. We've only got a month and a bit to go before FIFA 16, so you would imagine they would have announced some changes being made to that game mode. Um, so I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to see the same game mode as last year, or I should say this year, which is really, really frustrating because, as I've said before, I do believe that player career mode in FIFA has the potential to be the standout game mode in the game. I really believe that because... When you look at games like 2K, for example, and what 2K Sports are doing with um, with their M- NBA game, the My Career section in that game is just absolutely incredible. Like, it's truly amazing. It is unbelievably immersive. Um, I've said before, one of my favorite gaming experiences for me was on 2K in a My Career section because I felt so immersed in the game I was playing. You know, it was just a regular game, but I felt so immersed in it. And, uh, you know, we don't have that in FIFA. You know, we, we really don't. We don't have an immersive player career mode. It really just doesn't give you any kind of cool feel to it whatsoever. It just feels so bland and so so bland and so boring and so limited. And player career mode right now in FIFA, it, it's got worse as the years have gone by. It really has. And uh, it's a shame. They, they just seem to have neglected that game mode completely. And it's a real shame. And I do hope that uh, even though I don't think there will be any significant changes in FIFA 16, there might be, but I doubt it. I would hope that in FIFA 17, we do start to see some changes to that game mode because it was just so bland and so immersive. When you think about what they could do with it, they could make it like a real world sort of game mode, a real sort of immersive uh, game mode where they basically put you in the game and you are the star uh, like they do in 2K, for example. But they don't, they don't do that, EA. It's really, really limited. It's really bland. And it really is very, very very uh, in my opinion boring to be honest and uh, and there you go like you have to make it work you have to make that game mode work in order to enjoy it and the sign of a good game is where you can just turn it on and right from the first second you're enjoying it with player career mode you have to work to enjoy the game mode and that in my opinion is just it's just ridiculous but that's just how it is and uh, and there you go so we're going to start to this game approaching the halfway mark here and we are two goals up we've been the far better side and um Everything right now, I don't want to jinx it, but everything right now is coming together really rosy. Barcelona do not seem like they're capable of defending us at the back. Like Every single time we come forward, we look like we're going to breach their defence and, uh, and grab ourselves a goal. We've got two, and uh, I'll take that going into the half-time break, tune it up against Barcelona. But uh, either way, what we don't want to do is basically take the foot off the gas in the second half. That's the one thing we can't afford to do. We're playing well right now. We can't afford to put, put, uh, take the foot off the gas and allow Barcelona back in this game because they know, we know they've got the quality to go ahead and uh, catch us back up and grab the two goals to equalise. So I'd imagine the referee will blow for half-time in just a moment's time, so I'll just keep on talking whilst we're here. 
and uh, and there you go. But yeah, play a career mode, man. It's such a shame. It's such a neglected game mode. It's such a limited game mode. And I really do believe that it could be the big standout game mode in FIFA. Like you could really just immerse yourself in the game mode if they really worked on it. But uh, that's just uh, that's just how it is. But either way, 2 0 up here still is uh, Barcelona pressed for one final chance for the break. Bernie catches it, and I do believe that should be half time. And there you go. So half time, 2 0 to Torino. What a superb start to this game, and uh, and long may it continue. Still, next question comes from Didier, and uh, he says, "What's been the best moment of this series? Um, this series hasn't had too many sort of standout, you know, really awesome moments. But I think the best moment probably was winning the Champions League final." in the last season with Aguero's late winner because it was a really awesome game it was really really fun and of course we did what we set out to do right at the beginning of the series and that was make Torino uh, a really awesome European side one of the best European sides and we're doing that right now and uh, and that was uh, probably the best mode of the series so far so as you can see Barcelona have actually dominated possession but we've dominated the shots I thought it was going to be I honestly thought whoever dominated the possession battle would go on to win this game but of course still a long time to go but tune it up and Barcelona are having the ball but they're not doing enough of it and that's the problem and uh, and there you go and the next question comes from Matty Jones and he says what is one stadium you'd love to go to before you die and why um, I love stadiums I love architecture I visited quite a few um, but I would love to go to the new camp or Camp New, whichever you call it, because I think that would be amazing. And uh, to watch an El Clasico, that would be incredible. And the same with the Bernabeu at, uh, at Real Madrid's ground as well. I'd love to go there too. Watching an El Clasico at one of those two stadiums would be incredible. I, I, I know this is going to sound so nerdy, and that's fine, but I love architecture. I love stadiums. I've had a tour of quite a few of them. And um, I just, I love, love, love big stadiums and big architecture. It's, it's awesome for me. And um, yeah, visiting one of those two stadiums would be incredible. And watching a, a, an El Clasico there would be an unbelievable experience. And uh, that would definitely be something I'd love to do before I die. And, and who knows, maybe I will one day. And, uh, and there you go. Sterling plays through to Neymar. He's offside. Going to come to Messi now. And we are still up by two goals. We start the second half. I can see Neymar making a run there. Go on, Neymar. You've got the pace, sure. You've got the pace. Oh, it's Alba. You don't have the pace on Alba. Then Alba is so quick on this game. And, uh, and there you go. And that's the one thing about Barcelona's lineup as well. I mean, you know, the fullbacks aren't too slow in, in Alba and Alves, but the centre backs, PK and Mascarano, we've definitely got the pace to get past those with the, uh, the front three we have supporting Neymar. And uh, all we've got to do is get ourselves inside, and that's what we've been doing. We'll get the chances, and we could probably get the goals, which we already have right now at 2-0. And there you go. And the next question comes from Sebastian. He says, what's your bottom three prediction for the BPL? Um, I don't usually do predictions because I'm usually really wrong. Uh, I know last season I got Chelsea winning the Premier League right, and another season before that I got Roundup winning the Champions League right. But I usually get predictions wrong, so I don't usually do them because I, I know nothing about football. Um, but I'll do this one. Um, what I'll say is if you support any of the three teams I mentioned, don't take it to heart and don't feel bad because I'm basically telling you that your team will stay up because my team, my predictions are so bad, I'll probably get them all completely wrong. Um, and there you go. But I think the three teams that get relegated this year are going to be Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth will go down just because I don't believe they've got enough quality to stay up. Again, that's just my opinion, though. I'm willing to be wrong. Uh, and I think Sunderland will go down as well. I don't think Dig Advocate should have come back for another season. Again, just my opinion, but I don't think he should have come back for another one. I think they should have gone with a, a new fresh manager to give themselves a new start. And I also believe that it's going to be Watford. You know, I, I don't. I think Watford could stay up. I think Watford could definitely stay up. But I, I, I think that whenever you know new teams come up, I always think that two of the three will probably go down. You know, I always think that two of the three will go down and get relegated, and maybe one will stay up as well. Um, so it'll probably be between Watford and Norwich for the other spot and I'd probably say Watford ahead of Norwich to get relegated so the, the bottom three I'll have will be Bournemouth, Sunderland and uh, who was the other one? Watford so there you go but again if you support those three teams don't worry don't don't feel bad I'm I'm wrong so many of the times <laughs> your team will probably be safe instead but uh, either way we'll go with Bournemouth, Sunderland and Watford and come the end of the season we'll see how completely wrong I've been and, uh, and there you go and the next question comes from Jamie and he says what is the best TV series you have ever watched uh, the best TV series I've ever watched probably I've watched some really good ones but probably Scrubs just because this is probably going a bit before most people's time here but Scrubs was an amazing show because it had the capability of making you laugh uncontrollably at one moment and then you know five minutes later you're basically almost in tears you know it was an amazing show because it just it was able to just you know get those emotions out of you 
because it had so many tear-jerking moments, so many funny moments as well. Scrubs was just an awesome show, and if you haven't watched it before, I, I do recommend it. It was just, it was unbelievable, and uh, I wish they never went back for another series, uh, sorry, for another season. They, um, oh, what a strike by Masaccio, absolutely superb. I wish they never came back for another series, because, uh, sorry, another season, because they should have ended it after season eight, when it was an incredible ending. They should have just left it there. And then they carried on doing some kind of intern show, which I never watched. But either way, it sort of like just it didn't like diminish the legacy, but it just felt wrong. You know what I mean? But uh, either way, Scrubs would be the best show I've ever watched. It was amazing because it could just make you laugh and make you cry in the same episode. And uh, and there you go. And the next question comes from Ryan Mitchell, and he says, "Are you going to do a weekly video update on your fantasy league?" Now, I was planning on doing a series with my fantasy league. Um, I really was. I had a really cool idea where basically at the end of every single game week, whoever was top of the table, I would go ahead and uh, basically make the team they had and put it on Ultimate Team and play a game with it. So basically what I'd do is like... Um, for the first episode, for example, it would be after the first game week worth of football with... Um, with, uh, with the Fantasy League and in the Premier League, so that would have been City versus West Brom. And whoever was top of the table, I would have gone onto their profile, got their players and uh, made them into an ultimate team, played a game with it, played it live, and uh, basically just talked about the football, you know, what I thought about the weekend's football and stuff. But the reason I couldn't do that, you know, it was a really cool idea. I thought it was a really, really awesome idea. But the reason I can't do that is because I don't have the coins. <laughs> I didn't realise that at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, man, that's a sick idea. I can do that. It will get the subscribers feeling like they're involved as well, you know, by playing the Fantasy League too. Um, I thought it was a really, really cool idea making the team and then talking about the football whilst I'm playing the game too you know how, what I thought about the games and who I thought played well and so on um, and then I realized I don't have any coins because I don't have an ultimate team account and haven't played it this year so yeah it was, it was a cool idea and that was what I was planning to do but um, I don't have the coins and therefore I couldn't do it it was a good idea but um, oh well that's just one of those things really that's one of the curses of not having a coin sponsor I suppose but uh, either way it, it would have been fun to do that but Never mind, never mind, and uh, and there you go. Uh, still, the next question comes from, but I will say as well, if you are in my fantasy league, as I did say in the video, there will be prizes for the top three, uh, um, top three players come the end of the season. So whoever's first, whoever's second, whoever's third, they will get some prizes. I did mention in the fantasy uh, league uh, video, and uh, and there you go. It's just that was a, I thought it was a pretty cool idea to be honest. I thought it was a pretty cool idea, but uh, either way, it's just one of those things. And there you go. Uh, still, next question comes from Leo, and he says, "Hey man, love your videos. Uh, thank you very much, Leo. I appreciate that. Uh, wanted to ask why you." keep saying you're losing your love for football is there any particular reason um you know i don't really know what the ultimate reason is i would say it's a combination of certain factors um first and foremost because i don't go to as many games as i used to um uh, primarily for financial reasons, I don't go to as many uh, Millwall games as I used to, and therefore Neymar, come on, make it four. Ah, oh, good, good tackle there. I don't go to as many Millwall games as I used to, and therefore, you know, I, you, when you don't go to as many games as you used to, you start to feel a little bit, you know, not disinterested, but a little bit detached, if you will. So that's one of the reasons right there. Um, although hopefully this year I will go to a few more, depending on you know whether my financial situ situation improves or not. But we'll have to wait and see. And there you go. But that's one reason. But also because when I go to football nowadays, I go on my own. Um, you know, I used to go with my dad and um, my dad, my uncle and their mutual friend. We used to go as a, as a quadruple, if you will, to watch games. And, uh, and that was really, really fun because it wasn't just about the game. It was about the day out as well. Um, but, we don't, but I don't do that anymore. I go on my own. So that's a little bit, you know, which is fine. I don't mind being on my own and everything, but it's not sort of the same, if you will. Uh, that's another reason, I suppose. And just because I don't have Sky Sports anymore, so I don't really watch as many games on TV. I only watch a few. So that sort of makes me lose a little bit more interest because I don't get to watch as many games and therefore my opinion isn't as sort of... Um, not isn't valid, but uh, may not be as accurate because I haven't watched uh, all the games on the weekend and so on. So that's another reason. But I don't know what the sort of the ultimate reason is. I think it's just a combination of those factors, really. And uh, and there you go. Like I still like I still love Millwall more than anything in the world. You know, it's still my club. I still love them, and I still absolutely adore Millwall. And whenever I go, I'm always really enjoying it. And you know, that's that's something that will never change. I love my club, and that will never change. But there, there, there definitely has been a little bit of love lost for football. And again, it probably is just a combination of those factors, not just one ultimate reason. But uh, but there you go. And uh, Sterling gets on the ball here. I can see a man running at the far post. Going to try and pick him out here. Lucas with the header straight at Bravo. And, uh, and there you go. Still, next question comes from Nick. And he says, have you ever thought about doing a day in the life video or draw my life? I've done a day in my life video before. Um, that was many, many years ago now. I was probably like... Hmm, I'm 22 going on 23. I would imagine when I did that video, I was probably about 19. I did that a long, long, long time ago. Um, 
and yeah it was it was it was fun to make and i might do one again in the future i'm not too sure but uh yeah i did that one years ago that's been deleted now and um i did that years ago and that was that was okay um throw on Matsumoto Verratti just for a bit more defensive quality and um and yeah I did uh, did a day in my life video once but as for a draw my life video the reason I wouldn't do one of those is just because it's just too depressing like I really do mean that like I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want people to first of all I wouldn't want people to misinterpret you know what I'm what I'm saying uh for first and foremost and secondly because it would just would be genuinely too depressing there haven't been enough good moments in my life really to make a draw my life video um you know, come on, come on, come on. Yes, get in. <laughs> Had to remain quiet there because I was going for the Rabona goal. And we finally done it in the final game of the series. Get in. And that's Sterling's final touch as well because he's getting subbed off. Get in. Remained so quiet there. Had to keep my composure and I did that. Sorry, Nick. Just completely messed up the question there. But yeah, draw my life video. I just don't want to do it because it will be first too depressing. Not enough good moments have happened in my life to make it really good. And uh, because I can't draw. You know, ultimately, because I can't draw, I would draw like a person and you would think it's a giraffe, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It would just be terrible and uh, it would just be embarrassing. Like, the only way I'll be able to make it work is if I got someone to do the drawings for me. And I don't know whether that's like, is that is that fair? Is that like a rule you can't do that in Draw My Life videos? I'm not sure, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons I don't do it, because I just, I can't draw, you know, like, I would genuinely start drawing, like, cars and trees, and you would probably think I'm drawing elephants, and, I don't know, just, um, <laughs> I don't know, coliseums or something, it's just, it's just ridiculous how bad my drawings are, and, uh, and there you go. So, the next question comes from Danny Sorensen, he says, what is your favourite number? My favourite number is the best number there is, that's 29, uh, 29, because I was born on 29th of November, I share the same birthday with Ryan Giggs. Um, and uh, if that's interesting to you, and, uh, and yeah, that's why it's my favourite number because I was uh, I was born on that uh, that number of the day, that number of the day, that number of the uh, the month. And there you go. And the next question comes from Fraser. And he says, did you go to sixth form and or university? And if so, what did you study? I went to sixth form for about half a year. And Fraser, it was the most pointless experience of my life. Now, I know that a lot of you are contemplating sixth forms and colleges and unis right now. Uh, so what I'll say right off the bat is don't take what I'm about to tell you, you know, to heart. And don't think it's um, a reflection of what your experience is going to be. When I went to sixth form, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life I really didn't uh, when I was fresh out of year 11 back then we back then you could leave school at 16 in my uh, in my country and um, when I when I, I think I think nowadays you've got to stay until you're 18 I think but uh, but anyway um, yeah I, I left school I was going to leave school when I was 16 I didn't have any plans for you know where I was going and what I was going to do so I didn't know what to do my friends were going to sixth form and college um, they had plans of going to university and studying certain things but I had no plans whatsoever like as soon as I was leaving my GCSE year I had no idea what I wanted to do so it was either sort of leave school and do nothing for a while or go to sixth form like my friends are. So my friends all went to sixth form and uh, and, and one went to a sixth form with a different sixth form. But most of my friends stayed at the same school. So I thought I'll, I'll stay with them and I'll do some, do some subjects. But I had like literally no interest in the subjects I took. You know, psychology was the only thing I enjoyed. I took three subjects. I took BTEC sport. I took English literature, which I don't even know why I did. And, uh, and, uh, and psychology as well. So psychology, BTEC sport and English literature. And it was just so pointless because psychology I enjoyed. I enjoyed it and everything. But English literature and BTEC sport, I just took them because they were there and I thought they might be easy enough, mainly because, you know, sport was the only thing I was good at in school. And, um, and I wasn't too bad at English either, but that was English language, not English literature. So, you know, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just took those three subjects. And after the first couple of months, I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll sort of get into them. But I realized that, you know, the subjects I'm taking are supposed to set me up for, you know, a higher form of education or a job, like a specific job through those qualifications or a specific university degree through those qualifications. I just took them just because I felt like it. You know what I mean? So they weren't really going to give me anything. The qualifications weren't going to do anything for my, for my my career I've never got a job because of those three subjects I took um, and I never would have got one had I completed them and I, I never planned to go to university either so they were so pointless and after a couple of months I just thought I'm literally wasting my time here like I'm gonna be here I was 16 and I was like you know when I get to the stage when I'm 18 years old and I finished with uh, with sixth form like I would have gained nothing from it these qualifications aren't gonna be worth anything so I gave up halfway through the year and um, it was just such a pointless experience you know it really was because I had literally no plans to better my not better myself to, but to, to get myself a, a different um, 
a specific job or a specific university degree. So, you know, for, for those of you out there that are, you know, going to sixth form or going to college and have plans of going to university, the experience will be completely different to mine. I literally just did it because I had nothing else to do and it was just completely pointless. But, um, you know, it's, it's like sixth form and college and stuff and then going on to university, that's the route that all of my friends took or most of my friends took and it's, it's been beneficial for them and everything. But I always look at it like this, you know, I, I haven't failed just because I dropped out of sixth form because I didn't see the point in carrying on with it. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't negatively affected me in any way. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making a living or I will be as, as things stand, I'll be moving out soon. I'll be making a living by making YouTube videos, you know. That, those, those qualifications that I would have got a sixth form had I completed them I didn't get any because I left halfway through the first year. Those qualifications I wouldn't have, would have got wouldn't have impacted me in any way whatsoever when doing this or doing anything else. So yeah, sixth form for me was a complete waste of time. I left after half a year really, and uh, I never looked back because it was just completely pointless and, uh, and completely needless. Still, we won the game by four goals to nil, a really, really good performance. Barcelona did get more possession than us, but we got the goals, which is the most important thing. I don't actually know who would be man in the match. It probably would be Sterling, to be honest. Grabbed two goals and did look really dangerous all through the game. I thought he was probably the best player out there, but Neymar, despite not scoring, did get two assists. I thought he played quite well as well. Um... Shalanoli wasn't too bad. And Masaccio, two goals and an assist as well. Won the ball back quite a few times. How many times do I talk about defensive midfielders being so important, man? Seriously. If you play Karimo and you play on legendary, set yourself up for with defensive midfielders and get a quality one. They are worth their weight in goal. Masaccio played quite well. So it was probably between Masaccio and Sterling for man of the match. I will give it to Masaccio just for getting those two goals and assists. But Sterling could have done it as well with that Rabona goal as well. Either way, a good team performance. Everyone played well, in my opinion. And, uh, and there you go. So really, really pleasing to to get the result really really pleasing to win the trophy and that does now mean that as we end the series we have completed it for the first time ever back-to-back -back sweeps with a club that is unbelievable what a great show of dominance that is when we started this series we wanted to dominate we wanted to turn Torino into one of the best sides in Europe and we have certainly done that we really have been incredible and uh, it's it's been absolutely awesome how well we've done uh, with Torino in the space of just four seasons so really really pleased with that and, uh, and there you go. So to end, the, uh, to end the episode off, to end the series off, what we're going to do is show you the final squad report and uh, the final list of the player stats as well. And uh, and that will be that. Because again, I don't want to end it in uh, in June because if we do it like we did last season, then the, se the new season will start here. So I better do the squad report first instead of pressing advance and, uh, and messing it all up. So first and foremost, let's go look at the player stats of the, uh, the Champions League and then we'll look at the final squad report. And, uh, and there you go. So the player stats you can see here, Immobile grabs seven goals in our Champions League campaign. He was really, really good. Our highest scorer in this competition, Neymar, was our next closest. Assist, Masaccio got four. So did Verratti. Well, Verratti did pick up one, I think, whilst he was still at PSG. And clean sheets, Bernie grabbed nine clean sheets in the Champions League. How about that? It was really, really good for us. And, uh, and there you go. So whilst I'm doing this as well, I'll answer one or two more questions. And, uh, and there you go. So the next question comes from... Uh, where are we, Orarari? Next question comes from The Boss. And he says, The Boss asks me, so I better answer him. He says, Can you see yourself hitting a huge milestone like a million subscribers anytime soon? Wow, my boss is really riding me right now trying to, <laughs> trying to get me to a million subscribers. Um... No, basically, I don't see myself hitting a million subscribers anytime soon. I don't see me hitting a million subscribers ever. Um, but, you know, what I will say is that I'm just really, really thankful and really blessed to have 100,000 plus subscribers. That is that is an incredible amount. And, um, you know, on YouTube, every single YouTube wants to be bigger. Every single YouTube wants to be better. You never get to a stage on YouTube where you are satisfied with the audience you have. You always want to get bigger. You always want to get better. You always want to reach more people. You always want to improve the amount of views you get on your videos, the engagement you get as well. Like, you, you, you're never satisfied on YouTube. You always feel like you can do better. You feel like you can do more. And you feel like you can be a bigger YouTuber. It's never that easy, though. But, you know, for me to get to 100,000 subscribers, to get my plaque, like, I'm really, really proud of that. I'm I'm really, really pleased with that, and I'm very, very grateful and blessed because of that. And um, you know, I, I appreciate all the subscribers I have, and and there you go. It's um, it's been awesome to get some amount of subscribers. I don't know, you know, how far I can take YouTube, how many more subscribers I can get. I think my channel has probably peaked in terms of active viewers. But, you know, I'm very, very proud of what I have achieved anyway. And, um, you know, let's say that in a couple of years time, you know, YouTube starts to, you know, go down a little bit for me. I'll still think that, you know, to get to 100,000 subscribers is incredible. And um, and I was really, really proud of that. And, uh, and there you go. And the next question comes from Lee. And uh, he says, what is your favorite JME song? Um, I don't know. Probably... 
I like Integrity. That's a cool song. Um, I like Blam. Uh, I like Don't At Me. I don't know. Probably uh, probably one of those three. I like uh, I do I do like Roadrunner as well and Serious. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what my favorite one will be, but JME is probably my favorite grime artist. Though. He makes some awesome music, and uh, and there you go. And I also just noticed as well, like I've been going through the list of these um, these names that uh, you guys have been tweeting me. Um, <laughs> the names of you guys. So many of you guys have in brackets S D M N, and I just realized that's Sidemen, isn't it? That is that is that the Sidemen uh, acronym? Is that the right word for that? Um, that's, that's the Sidemen thing, isn't it? Is that like a competition they're doing or something? I've never really noticed that before. Like, loads of you guys have it. Like, tons of you guys. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like three or four from the people I answered to have that. That's crazy. But, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> just completely distracting the commentary topic there. Anyway, um, that is basically that, guys. That's the end of the series. So we end up with 30 odd million pounds. Let's, let's put it on the transfer budget. So 39 million pounds on the transfer budget and a grand total of the wage budget will be about half a mil, I'd say. Uh, no, whoa, 763,000. And 50-50, our budget gives us, whoopsie daisy, 50-50, our budget gives us 19.8 million and 381,000. So Torino are no longer the club they used to be. They are now, without doubt, one of the biggest clubs in Europe and one of the best clubs in Europe as well. And you have to say, if there is one player that regrets leaving this club, it is this geezer right here, Camille Glick. Our captain abandoned us right at the start of the series, went to Chelsea, and uh, he's 30 years old now. I've been keeping a very, very close eye on Chelsea's... Um, Chelsea's progress in Europe. Never once have Chelsea got to a Champions League final since Camille Glick left. We've won it back to back. We've dominated the Serie A. We've won three trophies in a row, two Copper Italias in a row. We have dominated Italian football. We are now starting to dominate European football. If the series continued, we continue to dominate Europe. I'm very, very confident of that. And uh, this guy right here, he could have led us to those Champions League trophies. He could have lifted those Champions League trophies. He left us and he didn't even get to the Champions League final once since he left. So Camille Glick, why didn't you trust me, mate? Why did you not trust me? Why did you not keep that captain's armband? Terrible. You made such a bad decision and uh, we'll never forgive you for it. Never forgive you for abandoning us and uh, and you have to witness what we end up doing. But uh, either way, that is going to end the series, guys. Ends the episode in the series as well. So I want to say a massive thank you for the support in the series. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. You guys have been mentioning as the series has gone on that there hasn't been a sort of a hero for this series. Usually I have a hero. Hasn't really been one in this series, one standout one. But Shalano is probably the closest you can get to it. Danilo as well. Bernie too, uh, as a goalkeeper that came in in the second season as well. You know, all of these players, though, sort of did it as a team and I think that's why I like this career mode more than quite a few of the ones I've done because instead of sort of playing for one player we play for the team you know and that's what made this series a little bit more unique compared to the other ones I've done where we sort of you know pretend like we're not focusing but we're sort of focusing on one player this time it was all about the team all about the squad you know making so many changes and uh, you know from when this series started off you know not a single one of these players was in the Torino team and we just completely changed it you know the only players that were still at Torino when we came in were Maximovic Damian and I think one or two more, Maximovic and Damian were, and I think actually I might just be it, oh, Benassi as well. So Maximovic, um, Benassi and Damian, only three players stayed in four seasons. We completely changed the team and we made them absolutely incredible. But anyway, guys, that is going to be the episode and the series as well. I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you for supporting the series. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed the episode and the series as a whole, then please do leave a like as it is much appreciated and really does help my channel out. We are getting very close to Fever 16 career mode. And uh, again, I will be letting you guys choose the team I'll be managing for that career mode very soon. But whilst I'm still uh, here uploading Fever 15 videos, I really would appreciate it if you guys would check out One Season Challenge. It is my new series. It hasn't got off to the best of starts, but I'm hoping it's going to pick up sooner rather than later. Really would appreciate you guys checking that series out and, um, you know, basically just trying to get yourself in, uh, try get, get, get yourself in, immersed in that series. I'm doing my best to keep it entertaining. I know we're all excited for you 16. I know right now a few 15 videos seem a little bit sort of subpar, but I'm trying my best anyway with that series and uh, I would appreciate it if you guys would go and check it out. You don't have to if you don't want to though, and that's totally fine. But regardless, to end this episode, to end the series, again, just want to say a massive Massive thank you for support. It's been really, really appreciated. You guys are awesome subscribers. I'm very, very grateful to have you guys. And, uh, you know, you've... Um 
you're constantly showing me support. I really appreciate that. And I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and this series as a whole as well. If you have, then please do leave a like. I would appreciate it. And there you go. So thanks for watching. Leave a like, enjoy the series and the episode. I won't see you for another episode of Torino Crew Mode very soon as we're now done. But I'll see you for another video on my channel hopefully very soon. And um, yeah, we're all excited for your 16 career mode. Still a month to go. But either way, thanks for watching the series. Appreciate your support as always. And I'll uh, I'll be thinking of you when FIFA 16 career mode comes out. I'll be knowing that you guys will be willing to uh, to make the uh, the choice for the uh, for the team we're managing. I'll be putting out that video very soon. Look out for that as well. And um, yeah, I'll see you for another video on my channel very soon.